we, as we know, call them the good old days of deer hunting. There's so many different ways, so many different techniques of hunting deer. It, it just, there's many, many, many books are written on this subject. And one of the big topics we get asked a lot about, and Steve, you're in that business, is food plots. You know, deer come to an area to feed and are on the wariness and lookout and all that. A lot of people want to know, should I hunt my food plots in the morning and evening or whatever? And everybody's got a different opinion on that. And there's so many different scenarios that could outline how you approach that technique. And probably everybody here has got a different opinion. Well, Larry, I probably liked and have killed most of my biggest deer either on or going to a food plot in the last 10 years. Uh, so I'm sold on food plots. But, you know, I think what we, we're looking at, I get guys say, man, I walk in my food plot and the deer all run out. But, you know, two hours later they come walking back. And I'm not going to disagree with it, but what came back? little button bucks and spikes and does and year and two year old deer. You know, if we're out there trying to kill a mature buck, don't forget, don't, I'm not trying to say he's a monster Boone and Crockett, a mature buck. You walk in a couple mornings in the dark and blow all these deer off of a food plot, there's a good chance that that mature buck is not gonna come back during the daylights. They're nocturnal animal anyway. So to me, I like the idea of in the morning, hunting off of food plots, where they're going to bed and where they're going to feed, and I hope that I can intersection, intercept them and not spook them deer off the field because, you know, you can be within a quarter mile and they smell you or hear you. They're down there snorting and blowing and them bucks are going to be gone. And yeah, the other deer will come back. So to me, I want to be able to hunt a food plot in the evening. I want to go in there at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock after I've had a nap or, or got a lunch and get in there, no stand I'm going to get in, get in there as quiet as I can, get everything settled, and let the deer come in there on their own. So to me, I like hunting food plots in the afternoon. I think for me, I can kill bigger, more mature bucks. I agree with what you said. I, mean, I think in the afternoon, you're going to, you can hunt the food plot. That's where the deer are headed in the afternoons. In the morning, they should probably own the food plot. In the dark, they're going to be headed back to bed. So what you're talking about, what we recommend highly is... Uh, Catch the deer either coming to the food plot or on the food plot in the afternoon and in the morning. Try not to disturb the area, but get between them and the bedding area and catching them on the way back. That's exactly the best way to do Obviously it. I you think. Guys are, you're, you're right about what you're saying, but I'm going to disagree in the fact that there are other circumstances and other situations where you can g go to a food plot, you can sneak in downwind, you can approach your stand, get in your blind, whatever it is, minimum disturbance, and you can get in there and you can hunt. It depends what the setup is. I think I think what you're saying, rule of thumb, is generally correct, but I don't think we should tell people that don't go screw well, up your food plot or don't go in the morning or you'll screw up your food plot. I think what we need to say is if you have a situation where you the only way to get to your stand is to go through the food plot and blow everything out. Yeah, I hunted for years with Bill Jordan in the Milk River. They don't hunt at all in the morning. They glass from up high at the rock and they watch because there's the way it's laid out, you can't hunt because you have to walk through the, through the alfalfa and the food plot. In the evening, it's just exactly what you said. However, there's other places where you can sneak in, perfect as can be, get in your stand, and you're overlooking the food plot. You never disturb the thing. You've got great hunting. And also, depending where you live and what time of the year it is, a lot of those deer will move off 9, 10 o'clock. They're back again, including the big bucks will often come out, especially up north. When it's bad weather, they're coming back out, and that's some of your best hunting, 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning on a food plot. I yep. agree. Uh, matter of fact, this magazine, Whitetail News, it's a magazine we publish three times a year. It goes to our customers, and it's got hundreds of pages a year on this subject. Um, one of the reasons that we, I was short on that was because Wade said I didn't have but like 15 seconds to get my thoughts out, so I had to be more <laughs> concise. Uh, and Bob mentioned the same thing, too, so I wasn't able to expand on my ideas like you did. So. You go ahead. They're going to cut all mine out. It's going to end well, up. Scott, to your point, we, yes, and um, on both counts, I mean, yeah. we, we take guys that pay us that think we know what we're doing. Sometimes we don't feel that way. Um, but we, I will tell you, we've got some farms with food plots that are set up that we can. Uh, one in particular, we've killed some great mature bucks out of over the years in the morning, and we walk right through the middle of this place to get there. But that particular farm, every day 
the guy's out there feeding cattle. He's running around on his little utility vehicle. His tractor's running through. They're banging stuff around at the barns. The deer that live in that area are used to human activity. They see it all the time. They don't, and they don't know just because I'm wearing camo and the farmer's wearing some Carhartts, the deer has no idea that we're different. And so sometimes we give a little too much credit, I think, to, the, to deer. And it's, it's if you change, what we've noticed is deer get used to situations. They're, they're conditioned behavior. And if there's a lot of activity in an area, you can feel okay about disturbing it that the deer are used to being disturbed. And they'll take off and they'll come back. Um, there's other farms that we've got at dead-end roads that don't ever see anybody. And like you've said, if you make the wrong move in there, those deer will decide, they'll not only just spook out of a, a food plot, they'll change their whole routine up maybe for a week. They'll decide, well, I'm not going to go back over there for a while. And they'll go somewhere else. So I think it is, it's very much a situational thing. I don't think there's a golden rule. Um, it's definitely bad to walk through a food plot, I think, and spook everything out. But if you can get into it, uh, you know, if there's, a, if there's a way to get into that, undetected if you will or if you've got a situation where there's a lot of activity anyway it, the deer may not mind so much but i think it's definitely situational i think it is uh, i think it depends very much on the situation <clears throat> and uh, the accesses that you have to, to your food plot stands is is uh, super important and i also think it depends on how long you're going to be there because if i roll into a state and i've got five days to hunt i'm going to hunt it different than if i than if i'm hunting my home state where i've got all the time in the world because i think some of the best sits that I've ever made were the, the nights that I didn't go into that stand because the situation wasn't perfect. I'm, I'm pretty low impact on my, on my best spots and, yep. and where I get to hunt a lot. Yep. I, I hunt very, very low impact and I, I make sure that those deer aren't alarmed to me. But when you're limited on time, uh, I think you just got to make the best judgment call you can. Uh, pick good access routes into your stand and, and, uh, and just roll with it.